Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to continue our Linux journey and we are going to compile Linux from scratch. So now, now we will continue to install some more toolings and the first tooling package that we want to install is a microprocessor called M4 and this is a very interesting uh, language and is used a lot in different build tools in Linux. I tried to write a little macro in this M4 language. Uh, I think that the um, all these auto uh, toolings uh, use M4 in the background to build things for uh, configuring things and so on. So this is used by a lot of different tools and uh, packages. So let's install this and we need to first off uh, unpack it. So let's see if we can find M4 here. There we have it. Mm. Okay, so this is one of those uh, that has a different compression. So let's just do that. And then we can go into M4 and we need to do a sed command here to change th some things in this as well. I O F T R Y. So F try lock file <laughs> should be IO try F try lock file should be changed to IO end of file uh, scene. That's an interesting change, and we do that in lib and for all C files. Okay. And we also need to put some define here into one of the files, so define uh, IO in backup and that should be 100 hex and we put that into the lib STO um, so the standard IO implementation H. Hmm. So why do we do that? Doesn't say this, these are some fixes for this current version of the glibc. So I guess we, they know what they are doing. They have not explained it more than that. So it is required to get this to work with the compiler that we have built so far. So we will configure it as usual to the tools directory. And then after this is done, we will run the make command to create this micro uh, uh, processor. So let's run that. And I don't think that this, uh, this uh, compiler is that large, so it should not take that much time. There is done. Let's check it to see that it's working. So now it runs a lot of tests and does a lot of compiling to see that it actually can um, <laughs> compile macros in a good way. So let's see if uh, all the tests pass. Yep, so it passes all the tests here after it built them. It skips a few, but everything was fine. And then we will install this package. So now we have this macro processor. Next up is ncurses, and this is a very common package in Linux, and this contains libraries for terminal independent handling of character scenes. So this is when you want to show something in your environment. Let's say that you want to paint a specific, um, a draw a, a, a dialogue, for instance, to ask the user something, or if you want to configure things, you can have dialogues that are in the terminal window, but they are drawn as pages. So this is the tooling for that. 
So let's go here and unpack that also. Uh, let's see if we can find N cursors. That was a tar G zip, so let's go into N cursors. And here we also do a Z command. There is a lot of changes in in this release, so we will change the M awk and remove M awk from the configure script. Okay, so awk is an uh, interesting command line tool, a little bit like Z. I wonder if M awk is a specific version of that, and we don't want to build that in our end cursors, perhaps. And then we do configure with dash dash prefix again. So this we we know by now. Then we do with with shared and without debug and without uh, ADA and ADA is a developer language uh, enable the deck and enable overwrite over right okay so let's see here Without ADA ensures that ncursor does not build support for ADA compilers, so we don't want that. Enable override uh, tells ncursors to install header files into include and include ncursors to ensure that other packages can find ncursor's headers successfully. And enable Videc switches wide character libraries on. Uh, so instead of normal ones, uh, these wide character libraries are used for both multi-byte and traditional 8-bit locales. So th this is to handle, uh, let's say, languages like Chinese and some of the Gen Germanic languages also have characters that are outside of the ASCII character sets and needs wider a wider range to actually be displayed on screen. So let's uh, run this configure script here. I believe that ncursors is a little bit of a larger package, so the configure is quite fast as you see, but I think the make can take a while. So I will let it run now and I will talk to you soon. Okay, so now we have built the ncurses library and we will make install that into our tools directory. And when we have installed this, we also need to make a sim link because we built it with wide character support, but some, um, some, um, some tools or some uh, executables will look for a library called ncursus uh, wide.so and we want it to be the same library so we will link it to lib ncur ncursus and you see here well, that we have a wide version here, but we also want it to have the non-wide uh, naming in uh, as a link. So we will create that link so it other um, other tools that looks for libn cursors will also find it. Next up, we will build a shell. So. This shell is called the Born Again shell. So uh, I think it's from a university, uh, Born. Uh, so they probably did one Born shell and then they did a new shell and call it Born Again. So this is the Bash shell and it's very commonly used in uh, Linux. And uh, I like to use Bash, some like said sh as their shell uh, other common one is x sh um, yeah you can also use just sh so the common shell um, so there's a lot of them but uh, bash is quite a nice 
uh, if you uh, want to start up uh, using Linux, then Bash will give you a good set of features. So we will configure this with uh, prefix uh, tools again. And we also want it without bash malloc. So it has its own malloc. This turn option turns off the use of bash memory allocation function, which is known to cause segment faults. Turning this <laughs> option off will... Okay. So it will use the glibsiv uh, malloc. So malloc stands for memory allocations. Uh, so it's interesting that they implemented their own and it's unstable. So we turn that off. Um, so that's an interesting way to do things. Um, I guess they required one and some system might not have one built in. But I think that glibc is pretty much in all Linux environments, except when if we use Alpine Linux, then you don't have it. So I will make do make here as well. So now it will build this bash environment or this bash shell. So we can uh, have a shell to log into when start up our Linux. And if you're wondering what a shell is, is this is the command prompt that I have been working in so far. So shell is something that can um, give you information, it can run programs, it can show you uh, file listings uh, and so on. So a shell usually have a set of commands that give you access to the system. Usually you have environment flags uh, and run the tests here while I'm talking. Um, so you can set environments in your shell. You can have things that run when you uh, load your shell. And you can, um, yeah. So depending on what kind of shell you have, you have different features in it. And in Bash, you also have Bash completion. So if you press tab, for instance, it will fill out the um, what you are looking for in the system and so on. So shells can be very sophisticated and very smart and then you can have shells that are uh, not that clever. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, Bash is a good one with a good set of features. Um, so let's wait for it to run its tests. So let's install our shell now. And after we have installed it, we will make it our preferred shell by uh, changing bash in the tools bin sh. So if you run sh, you will actually trigger bash or run bash. And I will split this video up in multiple videos. Um, but I think think that uh, this series is gonna uh, give you something and I hope that you will learn something from this series that you will understand Linux a little bit better um, if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues um, if you have any comments about this specific video then leave them in the comment section down below uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.